This video brought to you by our Patreons. Please consider supporting this channel and joining our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash NovaWing24. Hi there folks, my name is NovaWing24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your one-stop location for your simulation release news and goings on from the week that was. And here we are on Sunday the 7th of February 2021 for the first episode in this 2021 season of the Nova Wrap where we aim to bring you a selection of the latest releases for the wider simulation world and my thoughts and opinions are therein of them as well as all these companies vie to take uh, your and uh, take a slice of your hard-earned time and financial resources to impress you or not impress you uh, with their products for your simulation experience. So, uh, with setting the stage there, let's uh, guess. We are going to be so probably just a quick touch base to everybody. Uh, so, thank you so much for your everybody's support uh, in 2020 and previous years, and of course, uh, once again for those who've been reaching out to me over the last few weeks and seeing when 2021 was going to start. Uh, as I said, we are going to be back. We are back once again this year with more of the honest uh, first looks as I have been uh, wanted to give you over the last several years, covering you the latest releases for the variety of simulators, mostly flight simulation, but also other genres, other simulation subgenres as well. Uh, and then highlighting and relaying my thoughts and experiences are based on what the public and published published materials are for each of these products. Now, whilst we endeavor to cover all new releases that are made available um, some may slip through cracks so if you have a new release that you think I should be aware of please feel free to let us know uh, you can either join our community discord and let us know with the, the in uh, by letting me know there or alternatively via email or via my website all right so with that introduction uh, out of the way let's jump into it with some first releases for the again the once again the flight sim of the hour Microsoft flight simulator come Starting uh, this year with the first one being the from developer Sky Designers with their release of Naval Air Station Key West or a Boca Chica uh, for the new Microsoft Simulator. Now this is a really interesting one to first off with because really we don't really have a lot of military aircraft in this sim at the moment. We definitely don't have anything carrier capable yet. Um, so it's an interesting choice of, of scenery for the for Sky Designers to put out, um, but. I've got to admit that any concerns that I had were allayed as soon as I looked over the quality of the pictures that I'm seeing here. This looks absolutely amazing. Uh, now we really need to have some form of naval aviation uh, to match with it so we can uh, tour it properly. Now, this release uh, comes to us with a highly detailed rendition of the airfield. Um, it does sort of time walk a little bit. Um, so although the, the air station is... Um uh, is operational today. It is actually depicted as it appeared in 2010. Um, so it may not be 100% accurate to what it currently is to this day, but it definitely sets the stage with a beautiful uh, number of highly detailed static aircraft along with all accurate buildings placement uh, with custom high resolution textures throughout a full set of night lighting as well and accurate aprons and taxiways according to the available charts. So there's a lot going on there which is kind of cool, kind of awesome. I just love the detail that's gone into this uh, from this scene. Probably one of the things that I really love and it's going to seem a little odd, but it's something that always jarred me when flying through a lot of Microsoft Flight Simulator scenery around the coastlines, is that where you fly over the, a couple of marinas near the base, um, they've actually mapped boats to all the photo reel underneath. So you don't have this jarring sort of, you can see the boats in the photo reel, but there's no 3D boat on top of it. Um, this scenery resolves that, which is really, really cool to see. So lot there, a lot of Easter eggs coming through that as well. So pretty damn awesome scenery, this one coming in uh, for 18 US dollars or your regional equivalent available now from Sky Designers. Continuing on with more airport releases, this time from developer Bina Sim, uh, with a release of Halim Padant Kusuma uh, International Airport uh, for Microsoft Simulator. I'm sure I've absolutely butchered that, uh, but that is the main airport servicing Jakarta in Indonesia. Now, there is not a lot of information from the developer about this. In fact, there is sweet FA, to be honest. 
And initially, I was very, very concerned because I looked at it and thought, oh, is this, have they, they've just done a port over from their F6 scenery, but they haven't done just a port over. They've actually done a lot of detail here. They've overhauled it. From what I can see, they've updated the photo reel uh, compared to the FSX version. They've definitely updated the textures. The models look really, really good as well uh, and looks like a really well laid out version of this airport. Um, now, in terms of the accuracy of the taxiways and everything, from a quick first pass from compared to Google Maps, it looked fine. Um, but as I said, there's not a lot of information about this one, unfortunately, from Binosim. So Binosim, hey, you need to update your product description, just saying. Uh, but I do have to say, from first pass, looking at the images, looks pretty awesome. The other thing I have to commend them on is the price tag. Um, so this one's coming in for less than 10 bucks. So less, for less than 10 US dollars for this one, and this looks really, really detailed, includes both the civilian and the military sides of the airfield. Um, so I think that is a really good price point, really Really good modeling for that as well. So well done to Binosim for that one. So if you want to pick this one up, you can pick this one up directly from Binosim uh, or from your favorite flight sim retailer available now. Continuing on with airport releases, this time from developer Pilots. So previously, Pilots, of course, was normally known for their terrain mesh. They are sort of coming out with some more varied content now, including now a Cedar Key Airport uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, now, this is a uh, it has an interesting distinction of having the shortest paved public runway in the state of Florida, uh, with a re accurate representation of the airport as it appears in 2020, with a very short uh, runway uh, there. To, for challenging approaches for everybody. Uh, for a little interesting uh, island sort of destination complete with moving boat traffic featuring yachts and other watercraft, uh, full 3D uh, grass trees, full accurate 3D buildings uh, with high resolution textures as well, along with not just the airport itself, but the island it sits, sits on and surrounding, surrounding islands as well are all modeled in 64 plus square kilometers of photo real imagery and curated as well. Uh, now this one's coming in. Um, so this is probably Look, it looks really good, don't get me wrong. Apparently, the dev has an obsession with boats from all the screenshots, just saying. But anyway, um, my my problem with this one is the price point, straight up. It's it's 20 bucks. Um, and while I still I appreciate um, certain features of this one, probably the one thing to really call out that I didn't call out just before is their Zite Dynamic Scenery features, which apparently changes things like um, the boats that you'll see, the uh, fauna and flora that you'll see, and other sort of incidental features around the airport uh, will change every time the airport loads in, So, which is a really kind of cool way of keeping the airport alive. But at the same time, 20 bucks for a GA airport I think it's overpriced. Like, I just, I just think, think it's overpriced. Um, your mileage may vary, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, so that, that one, if you do want to pick this one up, this one's coming in uh, for, as I said, for 20 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Pilot's Web Store. Continuing on with scenery releases this week from the team over at FSDG. Saw the release this week of their rendition of um, Alejandro Velasco Astete International Airport. Uh, basically, that is the airport for the service Cusco in Peru and the surrounding area. Uh, now, this gives a highly detailed rendition of the airport as it appears in 2020 with a custom terrain mesh, the sloped, accurately sloped runway, uh, custom uh, 3D buildings for all of the airport and surrounding area, and also enhancements to all of the, the most of Cusco City, including a variety of extra landmarks and custom buildings all included as well. Variety of static aircraft included, custom uh, jetways, custom ground service equipment as well, and some interesting little pieces of ground clutter, including a uh, Peruvian Air Force Mi-8 hip uh, on one of the ramps as well. Uh, so considering that you get not just the... Um, the 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 airport but you also get the town as well and that in fact it is also a it's known as one of the most challenging uh difficult approaches and airports to, to approach into because of its high altitude and challenging winds uh, crosswinds uh this is probably going to give you a pretty good uh value for money this one's coming in at 22 us dollars or your original equivalent available now from fsdg Continuing on with scenery release this week from the team from FS uh, Dream Team. I saw the release this week of their rendition of Quiberon uh, Airport uh, for uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, so this is a civilian GA traffic aer aer aerodrome in the Brittany region of France. 
and uh, has been a uh, very active uh, GA airport uh, since the end of the Second World War. Okay, so in th this rendition of the airport is highly accurate, including all models done in full PBR, all airport layout and airport buildings accurate as it is in 2020. Uh, animated uh, ground clutter, including animated people around the airfield and the nearby beach, full supported dynamic environment, dynamic lighting included as well. Uh, full support for sloped runway and various variety of GA aviation routes included as well. Now, for this one, it uh, looks pretty good, especially we you are know, being on the water's edge there. It looks like it's amazing. It's great boat traffic, great views. Um, and the price point, not bad. Not bad. Coming in for 12 US, sorry, 11 US dollars or your original equivalent, available now from FS Dream Team. Continuing on with scenery releases this week for from developer Sim Breeze saw so their release of Horada uh, Airport uh, for Microsoft Launch Simulator, which is the uh, main airport servicing for us the Horada region on the, the Red Sea in Egypt. Uh, as a highly, it's a very busy airport, bringing um, during more peaceful times, bringing travelers from all over the world to the Red Sea resorts. Uh, now this is a straight port over of their uh, FSX one. Um, so I probably want to get that out of the way. This is a... Okay, it's, okay maybe not a straight port, but it's an enhanced port, but um, the buildings and the building textures don't look too bad, but the ground poly and the ground textures really let this down. The underlying satellite, Im satellite imagery is fine. It's the way the developer has done the ground poly with tarmacs, taxiways, and the like. That just, it looks awful. Like, just straight up, it looks terrible. Um, the 3D models, you can kind of tell they're a port over. They've definitely had a, they've definitely enhanced the textures, though. I'll give them, like, absolutely, they have, they have absolutely enhanced the textures, including full code of, full set of PBR support now as well. Um, they've used the default jetways. So, I mean, it, it's okay. Is it worth $25? I'll leave that up to you. Um, if it's an airport you're going to fly into a lot and you don't want well, like the default one, probably, but just be aware that you're dealing with a legacy product. And as I said, it's just the, the taxiways and the, the, ground, the ground poly really, for me, really lets it down from the screen caps that I'm looking at. I mean, SI? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll let you guys have a look and see what you think. Anyway, as I said, if you want to pick this one up, coming in for 25 US dollars or your original equivalent, available now from Sim Market. Continuing on with airport releases this week, saw the release this week of Abdijan Felix Hopot Boini International Airport. Oh, geez, what a this first episode of the year, and boy, have we got some names coming through it. Anyway, DIAP uh, International Airport as uh, the main airport uh, for the Ivory Coast uh, and is servicing the capital city of Abidjan. Uh, okay, so this one's pretty ordinary. Um, the SI, the satellite imagery looks pretty much like the default one. The ground tarmac textures and the like, they're not bad. They're, they're accurate. The layout is accurate. The, ta the taxiway markings are accurate and correct from the satellite imagery I'm comparing it to. Um, so that all looks good. The buildings, however, and the other general detritus around it and the, 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 the land side, like the non-air side sections of the, of the, of the airport scenery though, that leaves a lot to be desired. But having said that on the flip side of this though, for a price point, 12 bucks, I don't know. It depends on how, I'll be honest, I haven't seen the, def the default airport, so not sure. Um, but it looks like the only custom 3D models that have been included is for the two main terminals. Um, otherwise, it looks like they've just been used default library objects. So uh, also the tree positioning, just no, just nope. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, so this is from developer uh, Air, uh, Air, Corte, Air Corte de Ivory Virtual. Uh, so kind of fair enough that they wanted to uh, model their local airport. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's just... <sighs> mixed feelings about this one, but price point, not too bad. 12 US dollars, or original equivalent, available now from Sim Market. 
All right. Uh, this now brings us to the other end of the... Uh, four, four, four. Okay. All right. Let's do this one really, really quickly. Okay. So this is developer Illuminators. They have released 81 products. <laughs> Jesus Christ, they have released 81 products, most of which in the last seven days. All of them are something, something, night light enhanced. Okay, what they've done is they've gone through to all of the, um, the photogrammetry cities and they've slapped a bunch of default lights on a couple of buildings not worried about the colors, slapped it on a couple of highway inter intersection, intersections and are charging you eight to 10 bucks a pop for it. This is unbelievable conduct, unconscionable and no. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the same dev we saw doing this last year, but they've just renamed themselves. Um, I, yeah, because this is just, no, just no. If you want to burn your money on this, your call. Um, but yeah, no, it's just no on that one. Good luck. Okay. All right. And that rounds out the Microsoft Flight Simulator releases for this week. So moving from there into the ESP Sims with a single product release for the ESP uh, scenery, scenery release. And it was a scenery release as well for the ESP Sims this week. Um, <laughs> oh, if you can call it a release. Okay, so this comes to us from developer Micro Dragon Studio. Uh, with their release of their rendition of Dong Tak Toi Hoa International uh, Airport uh, for in Vietnam. Oh, dear God. Okay. Um, I can't with this scenery. This scenery is just... Okay, the only thing this scenery's got going for it is it's six bucks. That's the only thing this scenery's got going for it. It is, it is dirt cheap. Um, the quality of the photo reel and the modeling and the textures that you get, I. The road doesn't even the the road for the terminal doesn't even actually go match with the vector included road. The grass texture is, oh dear God, it looks like it's some form of like mutant fell green or something that you saw at a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, I get that Vietnam is definitely an area which gets forgotten a lot. I, I get it, but I'm seeing a reuse of a lot of default objects and the ground poly looks rough. Satellite imagery is very rough and overall okay yep six bucks available now from sim market moving on to the world of x-plane 11 and now with a few releases in the scenery world for x-plane 11 starting this week with runway 26 simulations coming out with their latest release of governor's harbor airport uh, for x-plane 11 um so not a lot about this airport i mean it's just got a fairly generic sort of description basically saying you know accurately 3d model 3d buildings pbr materials ground traffic um but looking at it uh i've got to say it, it looks pretty good they, they've blended in the photo reel really well the there's enough detritus sort of around the edge of the airport that actually looks kind of cool the ground poly and the, the taxiway markings, though, just seem like they're not quite right, but the buildings look pretty good, so yeah, not too bad. Um, I guess, again, like a lot, like I have an issue with a lot of flight simulation these days is the price tag. Um, 15 bucks for a GA airport. Um, admittedly, I said this is a lot better than some of the other stuff we've already looked at so far in this episode tonight, but still yeah i'll let you guys decide if you you guys and girls if you decide if you would like to get it so there you go 15 us dollars or your original equivalent available now from runway 26 simulations 
Moving on uh, for more scenery releases, this time from Skytitude, uh, the developer Skytitude. So the release this week of their rendition of uh, Aerodrome Redon Barnes, uh, Redon Beans, which is a public use airfield uh, in the Brittany region in France. So a small GA airport here uh, with a, uh, a hard surface runway and also a helipad and includes all accurate layout of the airport as it appears in 2020, include full support for PBR materials across uh, all of the airport major airport buildings and ground effects as well including wet surfaces and puddles uh supports a high definition helipad inside the airport area as well as as well as the high definition textures throughout the airport scenery includes 10 square kilometers of highly detailed large surrounding area scenery included as well with hand corrected high definition aerial imagery supported for that and the surrounding area as well so looking not too bad but again like i said a lot of the times um i'm thinking i'm really gonna i'm and this is probably gonna be Something I'm really going to be bringing across a lot more throughout this year and uh, when I discuss these new releases is I'm going to be targeting price a lot more um, because I fundamentally believe that we as the simulation gaming public are being ripped off for uh, uh, in, in the large part we are being exploited. Um, and I, I, I firmly believe that this price tag for this one is way out of reach. So this one is, and it's only $20. This one is 18 US dollars available now from xplane.org. Continuing on with x 11 releases this week from developer Richer Simulations saw their rendition, well, their release of St. Vincent 2019. Uh, now, this release includes, not only does it include the main airport, uh, E.T. Joshua Air Airport, or so rather, and, uh, sorry, E.T. Joshua and the uh, Argyle International Airport, uh, it also includes a full rendition of the island itself, including full photoreal coverage and custom 5 meter LiDAR generated to rain mesh as well. Uh, I said it, the update of the uh, island uh, layout and the airport layouts reflect as it is of 2019, so it is a little bit older, but they've taken that time to make sure they get it as accurately as possible, including support for full, full sloping runways at TVSA with handcrafted terrain mesh, as well as uh, customized approach and directional lights and a variety of customizable options for the surrounding area, as well as full support for SAM jetways and a variety of custom points throughout uh, all of the, of the St. Vincent Island, including the decommissioned TVSV Airport, Arnest Vale Stadium, and a variety of setups for advanced night illumination and the surrounding reef textures as well. So this whole pack's coming in, uh, considering you get um, a full, an active airport, a disused airport, and a full island update coming in for 24 US dollars or your original equivalent, available now from Sim Market. And uh, rounding out the x 11 release news this week from developer Boundless, saw their release this week of their rendition of Shannon Airport in Ireland. Uh, so this is a highly detailed rendition of a interesting one because it is a it was an, it was an official sh space shuttle alternate uh, alternative landing site when the shuttle was being used, as well as being a uh, standard long haul diversion for uh, transatlantic flights heading across into uh, Europe or into the UK. Uh, now, this rendition of the airport is uh, in rendition as it appears of 2020, including all accurate taxiways, runways, and apron networks updated with textures uh, to their current layouts. Includes full support for HD textures and PBR texturing throughout all major buildings and the apron, taxiway, and runway textures as well. Photoreal sea and water for the surrounding areas as well. And a custom hand, hand curated, hand corrected uh, color uh, photograph uh, satellite imagery throughout the add on as well. Uh, full internal uh, modeling of, in, of the main terminal. There was a variety of included static aircraft uh, as well as fully compatible with uh, Traffic Global and Wall Traffic 3 and with a variety of HD tree add-ons uh, as supports included as well and full animations of custom road traffic and custom airport vehicles included as well. And this one's coming in for... $25 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Boundless Sims. 
moving out of the flight simulation world and moving into the world of the permanent way for the world of train simulator saw so this week of the release of their british rail rebuilt west country and battle of britain class steam locomotive uh so this was a uh, class of uh, steam locomotives that was uh, brought into service uh in uh, designed for the uh, a post-war sort of uh, emerging need for uh, trail for train services and is based on the Merchant Navy class, essentially being a uh, lightened, a lightened version of the version of the Merchant Navy class, uh, to be able to perform to a similar standard, yet be incre have an increased route availability for a war-torn and rebuilding uh, Great Britain. Uh, now, in service, it would go through and be a familiar sight. The 110 strong fleet would work hard and be a, be a familiar sight across many uh, different uh, of the UK Southern Railways and would serve on well into the 1970s. So this is a highly detailed rendition um, of the rebuilt variants uh, of that uh, class of railways, including multiple nameplates, tender variants, authentic sound set from a real train, includes advanced simulation, including uh, advanced, advanced simulation modeling of the vacuum brake leaking, uh, reverses with lock, sanders with appropriate delays, prototypical injection of firing and stoking, and multiple brake modes, as well as a custom automatic fireman as well, with a variety of various levels of optional assistance available to the user as well. Now this also includes, as well as the train, also includes uh, four scenarios uh, for the Welsh Border Express, uh, for the Welsh Border Express scenarios available if you also have the Welsh Marshes Newport to Shrewsbury route add-on as well. And this one is available for 25 US dollars or original equivalent available now on Steam. Continuing on with a permanent way, but this time into the world of Train Sim World 2. Uh, so the, this week, the release of the Southeastern High Speed London St Pancras to Faversham route add-on. Uh, so this was a route ad uh, route of the Chatham Main Line. Was originally this route, which dates back to the 1860s. Uh, but this particular is when it was uh, overhauled during the um, early two or the late 2000s, uh, when it was overhauled to become a high speed route. Be, be, actually became known as the High Speed One route. Uh, now this is uh, an update of this scenery as it appears during uh, so during the last say 2020 2019. And includes 51 miles of track between London, St Pancras to Faversham. Uh, includes two trains, includes the British Rail Class 395 EMU uh, and the 375-9 EMU uh, in various British Rail liveries. Now, this gives you a, each train gives you a highly detailed feature-rich cab with dry, uh, feature-rich driving cabs with accurate true-to-life performance. And the area is highly detailed, including a variety of custom points of interest and a variety of interesting things to point out there as well as well as a variety of uh, accessible training modules and five detailed and engaging scenarios for the route, as well as a full extensive 24-hour timetable and a journey mode in featuring over 24 hours of activities as included as well. And this one's coming in for 30 US dollars or your original equivalent available now on Steam. And uh, rounding out the Nova for this week saw the release from developer Killerfish Games of their latest release, their latest product, The War on the Sea. Now, this was an interesting one. So I really like Killerfish Games. Now, I'm going to start this by saying I was initially really, really excited for this this release because uh, the two previous uh, releases from Killerfish Games um, being uh, Cold Waters and Atlantic Fleet, I absolutely love. I absolutely love the, the sort of armchair admiral part of those, but actually sort of, you know, being looking at it from a visual eye candy perspective, but not really being too focused on, you know, simulating every nut and bolt and whatever and sort of... It, Bit of armchair strategy kind of stuff, uh, armchair tactical, armchair tactical combat kind of thing, but for ships. So I really liked the idea of it. I thought it was really good, really simple, really clean interface, really really well executed. Uh, and this was going to be their big sort of next step, where they make it a big thing, where it's going to be uh, a more campaign like. It's going to be focusing on the war in the Pacific in 1942, uh, with uh, and you can play as either um, the Allied forces, or essentially playing as America, or you play as the Imperial Japanese Navy. Um, you know, focusing on the sort of engaging gameplay of being external view times, but it was still a real, but it gave you more real time though, as well as adding in new features, including tactical control of aircraft, um, controlling of submarines and ships as well. So there's a lot going on here as well. Um, and it looks kind of right, but the 
feedback that the community is giving is not good. Um, and the well, one of the things that always and and you, I've heard you talked about this already is that I look at the length of descriptions from developers, and if it's really short, I get concerned. Um, because then suddenly it's like, okay, what are you not not hiding, but what are you not telling us? Um, and as I said, I haven't played it. Clearly, I haven't played it, and I was about to pull the trigger on buying it, and now I'm looking at the reviews and going, I might wait a little bit, um, because there seems to be, from reading through it, there seems to be a lot of bugs. There seems to have been potentially rushed out, so we will see what happens with that. If you are wanting to pick this one up, though, and give it a try in its current state, you're looking at 40 US dollars or your original equivalent, available now on Steam. And with that, folks, that does now round out the Nova app for this week. The first one for 2021. So uh, thank you for welcoming me back. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed these videos and want to see more. And if you'd like to support the work that I do here on the Nova app and on my channel here on YouTube, please consider joining our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash Nova 24. All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.